Welcome, thank you for clicking through to this video where I'm going to explain what happens inside the engine when we use too much choke. And what I'm trying to say about too much choke is really just having the choke on for too long. But in order for me to successfully explain this, I've got to go back and show how these chokes work again. I know I've done this in another video, but I thought I'd bring it both together here and explain the two together. And it goes through to explaining how the carburetor works slightly and how that fits in with the workings of the engine. So there's quite a little bit of information here. So I hope you find that it flows quite well. And just to mention now, this is a very basic explanation. There's far more to these systems than what I'm explaining now. And as always, this is how these systems work to the best of my knowledge and beliefs. So let's get started then. OK, so what I'll do, I'll put it all out here diagrammatically and we'll go through it. So to start with then, we'll start with a fuel tank. And then, of course, we need some fuel. So we've got some fuel in there. And we've got the fuel tank cap there but down the bottom here we've got a fuel filter now i've made it quite large here just to explain my point a bit and it's not to true scale of course but we've got a, a fuel line coming off there and down the bottom here we've got the carburetor this is a four stroke carburetor for now i'll just explain the four stroke for now and then we've got an engine attached to the carburetor and down here we've got the inlet manifold that allows all the fuel and air to come out of the carburetor into the engine and it wouldn't normally be this shape this is more like a cone shape the reason i've had to do this is because i've had to make the carburetor to a larger scale than it would be for this size of engine just so i can show what's going on through the carburetor that's the only reason so these two here are not to scale and so we've got all the system now primed with fuel and we're ready to start the engine so before we do We've got to, of course, make sure that the choke is actually on because we've got the choke butterfly that opens and closes here. So we'll make sure the choke's on then. And while starting, the throttle butterfly here will be just slightly open, just allowing some of that air and fuel through. So when the engine starts and the piston lowers on the induction stroke, it draws in air. It's actually creating a strong vacuum as it's lowering. So that vacuum then is drawing in air out of the air filter and into this side of the carburetor. And it would like to just go through the carburetor and towards the engine at a pace governed by the piston. So it would just like to happily go through it to flow without any restrictions. But of course it can't do that because we've got the choke butterfly closed. But the butterfly has a little tiny hole through it and a small amount of air can get through this. And some air may well sneak past the sides of this butterfly. But again, it'll only be a small amount. Because of this choke butterfly then, there isn't as much vacuum felt on this side of the carburetor as there is on this side of the carburetor as a result of the piston lowering. There's only the amount this side that can be generated through this tiny hole here sucking through. I realise I'm taking you on a, a bit of a how it works tangent here, but like I've said, if I can show you how these systems work correctly, then you'll have a firm grounding, a firm understanding of why an engine will only run on choke when I show you in a moment where these systems fail. And let's remember that this piston is still lowering, so it's still creating a vacuum. So it wants to draw in all of that air and fuel above it. But because the choke is in its closed position, it can only draw so much air in. And that really creates a little bit of a standoff between the fact that the piston wants to lower and draw all that air in and the fact that this restriction is stopping the air coming in. So what actually happens now is that a vacuum builds up in this area here as a result. And it's kind of like a suction gun or a syringe. When we pull back on the syringe or the suction gun, air will enter into it. But if we put our finger on the top and try and pull it back, then obviously it's going to create that vacuum inside of there. But the vacuum building up in here is a very good thing. And that's the reason we're using the choke to create this vacuum when we first start an engine. And I know I've already shown you here these little red dots that are indicating fuel mixed with the air. But let me just show you now how that becomes. OK, so that vacuum that's building up here, that strong vacuum is felt here on the main jet so it's sucking up out of the main jet and to explain this basically the main jet is like a brass hollow tube that runs all the way down and into the fuel just like when we put a straw in a glass of soda pop 
And so, just like having a drink through a straw then, that vacuum build up there in the induction area there is pulling up on that fuel beneath it. So it draws it all up, it sucks it out up to the top of the main jet and then draws it out into the induction tube there. And so the result of this high level of vacuum pulling out of the main jet there is that we've now got a higher ratio of fuel compared to air going into the carburetor there and into the engine and that's necessary to get the engine started we need more fuel in there because the engine's still cold and so the piston continues to lower then and draw in that fuel and air and of course just to be clear when the piston gets to its lowermost point we're not drawing anything else in now because there's no more vacuum and then the piston rises up on the compression stroke there and it compresses that air and all of that fuel that's with the air and then we've got the spark that takes place combustion takes place the piston lowers again with all that exhaust gases inside now inside the cylinder and we've got some fresh air that meets the exhaust gases then the piston again comes back up and pushes out that exhaust gas with that air and so the engine will run like this with the choke on for several cycles of the piston of course until the engine's warmed up enough that we can actually turn the choke off so that depends on the type of engine we've got but there will be several cycles like this and then we can turn off the choke and in carburetor terms turning off the choke means opening the choke butterfly if we were to leave the choke butterfly on for longer than it needs to be because as I've said now the engine's that little bit warmer then of course the engine will run lumpy and sometimes smoke excessively and the reason for that is because we've got too much fuel in there and it always was too much fuel even from the beginning even when it was just started from cold start but the thing is with the choke it gets that amount of fuel in there a larger amount just to initially get it started and initiate those first few cycles of the piston showing the induction stroke again there's so much excess fuel in fact that it starts to lie on top of the piston and line the cylinder walls and when the piston rises again it's more likely to look something more like this of course this is just a diagrammatic model here it's not exact to scale the amount of fuel in there but there will be a lot in there on the compression stroke and because there's a lot in there not all of it will be combusted so there'll be some incomplete combustion there and so there will still be some fuel hanging round in that cylinder regardless of the fact that the spark plug has just fired on this power stroke and as a result of this incomplete combustion then the exhaust fumes that are left in the wake of the power stroke have unburnt fuel within it and so as the piston rises now on this exhaust stroke it doesn't only push out the exhaust gases through the exhaust port there it also pushes out fuel that's been unused and anyone who's actually run an engine with the choke on for too long will actually know that this smell of fuel does come out of the exhaust, they've probably experienced it, and that the lumpy running and the excess smoke in some cases is all down to this excess fuel. And what I'm trying to say here is, when these systems are running correctly and there's no issues, so there's nothing broken down on the machines, the choke produces this kind of running almost instantly, even when the engine's cold and we're first starting it. In general that is of course, but of course there's always exceptions to everything. And that's because the internal combustion engine like this little one here isn't designed generally to run on this amount of excess fuel at any time whether it's warm or cold that is as i've said when everything's running smoothly so that there's no issues in any of the areas here so we've got fuel coming in properly it's good fuel good filtration carburetors working well engines working well under those conditions that's when i'm saying that in general this type of engine is not designed to run on this amount of excess fuel at any time even though the choke's designed to bring this high amount through and as i've said this amount won't result in efficient engine running but we need this amount because when the engine's cold it can't efficiently burn small amounts of atomized fuel that it can do when it's warmer but of course when we come to start an engine we can sacrifice just at the beginning the engine running well for actually getting the engine started in the first place and at the same time we can't have this kind of uneven running for long that's why we only use the choke very momentarily and then we can turn off the choke and the engine will run okay under normal circumstances that is okay so thank you so much for watching this video and please do if you haven't already 
subscribe and press the like button and if you think anybody else would benefit as a result of watching this video then please do share again thank you so much for watching and i'll be back soon